Hi, and welcome to this week's weekly wrap up for Friday, August 2nd, 2024. Thanks for tuning in and joining us. We appreciate it. As always, we have a lot to cover, so let's get started. So this week, we didn't have any shows. As I told you, we're rounding out the month of July and the summer months, and we are picking up next week with Derek Johnson and SGN on, where we always have very good and fruitful conversations with those gentlemen. We'll look forward to seeing what they have to say on both geopolitical and financial fronts. Always a treasure and a treat to have them. So now let's get started with the headlines. Delta Airlines expects to lose $100 million in revenue as travelers avoid Paris during the 2024 Olympics for July and August. <clears throat> Delta has the most flights of any U.S. airline to Paris and operates a joint venture with Air France. Business travel <clears throat> and other tourism to Paris is expected to be lower during the Olympics with travelers going elsewhere or postponing trips altogether. Air France, KLM also expects a revenue hit of up to $195 million due to the avoidance of parents, Paris during the Olympics period. Uh, this is news that many of you will like on the currency front. Israel and the United Arab Emirates are preparing a nightmare for Iran. The Houthis are on their doorstep. We now see that uh, Iran has made purposeful attacks after the hits on Hamas and Hezbollah. They are now attacking uh, Israel, which is the grave surrender, which will put Iraq center stage, which we know is involving the currency reset. And after the Olympics, we should see China, Taiwan. For more details, you can go to our telegram where we lay out what we see are the steps that are coming up for the months of August and September. This marks the ultimate end for the Brook Family Brewery, the traditional company from Saarbrücken, which has been operating for over 322 years, has declared bankruptcy. Despite the owner's relentless efforts, it seems the only remaining asset might be the rights to the brand name. Bungie has announced the elimination of another 220 jobs at its studio beginning today, publishing a lengthy statement from CEO Pete Parsons, who explains the decision to ax about 17% of the company's total workforce and yet another massive blow to an already career, a careening space within the industry. The VA, uh, is under fire after a damning report revealing the department is trying to rid itself of nearly 10,000 staff members while trying to keep a lid on the multi-million dollar scandal. Badcock Home and Furniture and More, a retail-based center throughout the southern U.S. has announced Tuesday it would be closing every single one of its stores. The 120-year-old chain <clears throat> is owned by Cons, which fell into bankruptcy just last week thanks to nearly $2 billion of debt and lots of overhead costs many of which were associated with the acquisition of Badcock last year. Badcock has over 380 stores in Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, Tennessee, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and Virginia. <clears throat> Excuse me. Starbucks on Tuesday reported quarterly earning revenue that missed analyst expectations as both the U.S. and international cafes face weaker demand. Net sales dropped one to $9.11 billion, the company's same stores fell 3% in a quarter, fueled by a 5% decline in transactions. Retail giants fall. Walgreens succumbs to inflation and shuts additional hundreds of stores coming up in the month of August. <clears throat> Major Australian beverages brand collapses after 159 years. The collapse of the business comes despite annual sales soaring to about $120 million in 2023-24, up $100 million a year earlier. Rob Smith and Matthew Hutton from McGrain Nickel have been appointed as the administrators. In January, Bilson's employment approximated about 200 staff members. A smaller chain restaurant, Melt Bar and Grilled, which at one time had 14 locations in Ohio on June 14th, filed for Chapter 11 protections. <clears throat> Company cited financial difficulties from increased food and labor costs and inflation facing lawsuits from landlords. <clears throat> Out of Washington Reuters, the Federal Reserve is expected to leave interest rates unchanged at the end of a two-day policy meeting that came this Wednesday, but also indicated that a reduction in borrowing costs could come as early as September. Contracts tied to the U.S. Central Bank's policy rate show investors are convinced a rate cut will happen at the September 17th, 18th meeting, uh, with the only disagreement being whether the Fed will begin easing policy a quarter percentage rate, as most expect, or a more aggressive half percent rate cut according to the CME Group's FedWatch tool. Two senior board members leave SAP as restructuring hits the fan. <clears throat> Walt Disney Company is planning a fresh round of cuts 
in its TV division, part of an effort to reduce cost and a shrinking part of its business, according to people with knowledge on the matter. The company is eliminating roughly 140 jobs or about 2% of staff at Disney Entertainment Television, said the people who asked not to be identified discussing non-public information. The cuts will fall hardest on networks like Nat Geo and Freeform, which are scaling back their programming as well as the company's ABC respective stations. Guardian Pharmacy based in Pennsylvania filed for bankruptcy. This includes 19 affiliated entities across Pennsylvania as well as West Virginia. Guardian specializes in elder care services and skilled nursing facilities. The bankruptcy highlights the financial strain on specialized health care providers. California-based Vintage Wine Estates, one of the largest wine producers in America, filed for Chapter 11 this week as a part of a restructuring process. Wall Street Journal reports that Amazon CEO Andy Jassy is reviewing Twitch's profitability, expressing little tolerance for unprofitable divisions. With an annual operating review scheduled for autumn, Twitch employees fear further layoffs may be announced. Following closures from fast food joints like Pizza Hut and sit-down restaurants we know like Red Lobster, another chain is saying farewell to several locations of its own. Buca di Peppo, the Orlando-based Italian restaurant chain known for its family-style portions and over-the-top decor, has closed 13 underperforming locations this week. There will soon be one fewer Brookshire Brothers location in Southeast Texas. After 35 years in Vidor, the Brookshire Brothers located at 1380 North Main Street will close when its lease expires at the end of August. <clears throat> in a news release, Brookshire Brothers President and CEO John Alston said it is necessary for Brookshire Brothers to cease operations by August 24th to effectively exit the grocery store chain and return the property to the landlord's control. Intel plans to lay off thousands of employees this year and pause dividend payments in the fourth quarter as part of a broad cost cutting drive more than three years into the CEO Pat Genslinger's turnaround effort. Gelsinger laid out the plan to reduce costs by more than $10 billion next year as the chipmaker reported second quarter sales of nearly $12.8 billion, which is down 1% and below analysts' forecasts in the fact set survey. <clears throat> Excuse me, reaching that cost reduction goal will require cutting jobs and lowering capital expenditures, among other moves the company stated. At the time of this broadcast, we have the latest uh, precious metals and Brent crude prices. Gold up now close to $2,500, which is an all time high at $2,494.20. Silver at $2,858. Brent crude oil, $79.85. But we know those prices are going to be spiking here shortly. Now on to the notable deaths and resignations. In Atlanta, Georgia, Dr. David A. Thomas, the 12th president of Morehouse College, has decided to retire at the end of 2025 academia year. The move marks the end of an era for one of the nation's most prestigious historically black colleges. Dr. Thomas's tenure, which saw a renewed focus on diversity and inclusion, will come to a close after seven years. <clears throat> Reuters reports insurance firm Lowe's CEO, James Tisch, will step down after nearly 25 years at the helm, with his son Benjamin being named the successor the company said on Monday. The leadership of the company will remain with the influential Tisch family known for their varied business interests in philanthropy and after whom New York University's Tisch School of Arts is aptly named. Multi-cloud application security and delivery solutions provider said that Frank Pelzer, executive VP and CFO, plans to retire during the company's first physical quarter 2025, which ends on December 1st of this year. <clears throat> in the meantime, Mr. Pelzer will continue in his current role at the company and will assist in the transition to his intended successor, Edward Cooper Werner, current senior VP of finance who is slated to be appointed upon Mr. Pelzer's retirement. According to Smart Rent, on Tuesday announced that Lucas Halderman has stepped down from his position as CEO and resigned from the board of directors effective July 29th. John Dorman, the board's lead independent director has been appointed as chairman of the board and the board has formed a management committee of the current executives to guide the company through the transition period. Carlos Ferrero is set to exit Televisa Univision as CFO for health reasons, the Spanish language media giant said on Wednesday. Juan Pablo Newman, Chief Growth Officer of Televisa Univision Mexico, has been named interim CFO starting September 1st of this year. 
Televisa Univision said Ferrero will remain with the company in an advisory role during the CFO transition. HBO and Max Multicultural Marketing Chief Jackie Gagne has departed from her role at the company after four years, having worked for the brands in some capacity for more than 13 years. The company said the multicultural marketing team will, quote, remain intact under the supervision of Max and HBO Originals Executive Vice President Pia Barlow. Samoan boxing coach Olympic star is left broken as his coach dies in Paris at the age of 60 and a horrible echo of a previous family games tragedy. Dick Marconi, Marconi Automotive Museum founder, dies at 89. In, Tusk in Tustin, California, the Marconi Automotive Museum is home to more than 100 historic race cars, muscle cars, motorcycles, and many other significant vehicles with a total value of more than 60 million. The nonprofit museum donates admission fees to charities and organizations that help children in need. For more information, you can visit marconimuseum.org. Doug Creek, a former major league baseball player who played nine years in the big leagues, has died after a reported battle with cancer. He was just 55. The Bachelor star, Haley Merck, has died of leukemia at only age 31. Merck uh, chose to spend her final moments surrounded by loved ones. Her, her loved ones wrote in a post on Instagram confirming the news that the star had died on Friday, July 26. Jack Kidd, the head grip for The Bold and the Beautiful, television soap opera series died on July 25th, he was 60. The former head grip was involved in an accident off Little Tahunga Road. He was last seen on July 25th, leaving his home in Canyon County, uh, excuse me, Canyon Country, and was declared missing by the Santa Clarita Valley Sheriff's Department. Bobby Bannis, best known as Joy Boy in the 1961 film adaptation of West Side Story has died. He was 90 years old. Bannis died Monday at an assisted living facility in Encino, California. Adrian Flannelly, who hosted the world's longest running Irish radio program in the US has passed away. Flannelly presented his own radio show, the Adrian Flannelly Show across America for 54 years. Adrian was born in Adamus, Comeo, emigrated to the US in 1959 at age 17, the Long Island resident, was inducted into the Hall of Fame by Irish American Magazine in 2019 and also received the prestigious 2021 Presidential Distinguished Service Award for his incredible contributions to the Irish community within America. Veteran Royal Media Services journalist, political commentator, and scholar Professor Nuji Naroji is dead. Professor Nuji was a host at Enuro FM's Late Night with Kira show with Nujiro Waihira. His colleagues at Enuro FM and the RMS stated that Nuiji died on Monday morning at his home. Groundbreaking Irish author Edna O'Brien has died, according to a statement from her publisher, Faber, and the itinerary agency F uh, PFD, O'Brien passed away Saturday following a long illness at 93 years old. According to Reuters, William Calley, who during the Vietnam War led his U.S. Army platoon into the Vietnamese hamlet of My Lai, has carried out one of the worst war crimes in American history, has died, according to media reports, he was 80. Prince Michael of Greece, the first cousin of Prince Philip, has died at the age of 85. Francine Pascal, mastermind of the long-running, best-selling, and much-beloved Sweet Valley High series of the young adult books, died Sunday in Manhattan at the age of 92, according to the New York Times. Per the report, Pascal's daughter, Lori Wenk Pascal, confirmed to her outlet that her mother died of lymphoma at New York Presbyterian Hospital. John Anderson, the famous referee of the famous 90s and 2000s game show Gladiators, has died at the age of 92. The Athletics Weekly reported on Sunday, July 28th, he had passed away according to an Instagram post from the official Gladiators account. <clears throat> Mad TV actress Erica Ash has died at only age 46. Erica Ash, the actress known for her role on BET's Real Husbands of Hollywood series, has died according to a statement from her mother. She died on Sunday after a long and courageous battle with cancer, according to the statement which was provided to CNN by Ash's publicist. Lord Robert Fellows, the brother-in-law of Princess Diana, has died at 82 years old. Fellows was uncle to Prince William and Prince Harry and a former secretary to Queen Elizabeth II. He died Monday of undisclosed causes in obituary published Wednesday in the British news outlet The Times. Charles Spencer, the beloved brother of Princess Diana, passed, appraised his late brother-in-law in the next post on Wednesday. 
Stephen Arroyo, the prolific attention-grabbing force behind Cobras and Matadors, Church and State, Escuela Tequiera, Milo, Boxer, Burger She Wrote, Cobra Lily, Potato Chips Deli, and more has died at age 55 on Sunday due to medical complications from cancer treatment, one of his business partners confirmed. Rapper actor Chino XL died on Sunday at his home, according to a statement from his family. No cause of death has been announced at the time of the article's publication. He was 50. The Bronx rapper, whose real name was Derek Keith Barbosa, is survived by his children, China, Bella, Lyric, and Kiana, stepson, Sean, five grandchildren, his mother, and his longtime partner, Stephanie. Kim Sengupta, a fearless war correspondent and independent institution, has died. The renowned historian who wrote under the name Michael de Gris died at a hospital in Athens, the Kathamiri newspaper said. Kim Johnson, the former school teacher who competed in Survivor Africa, was the season's runner-up, died July 23rd, excuse me, after a long bout with cancer. She was 79. James C. Scott, one of the world's most widely read social scientists who studies on why top-down government schemes of betterment often fail and how marginalized groups subtly undermine authority, led to the embrace of anarchism as a political philosophy, died on July 19th at his home in Durham, Connecticut. He was 87. Uh, Sweet Valley Prince High author Francine Pascal has died at the age of 92. Former team GB footballer Gemma Wiseman died by suicide. An inquest has concluded. The 33-year-old who had represented England and Great Britain's deaf women's teams was described in a family statement read to her, her hearing as a, quote, loving wife and mother. Wiseman was found in Woodland close to her home in Rackheath near Norwich by concerned friends who were looking for her uh, December 16th of last year. Hockey Hall of Famer Murray Costello has died at age 90. The former president of the Canadian Amateur Hockey Association and Hockey Canada died Saturday in the presence of his family. Costello, born in South Porcupine, Ontario, was well known for his contributions to hockey as well as the number of people he impacted through his journey in the sport. Team USA coach Adam Kirkurian revealed the passing of Lulu Connor only at the age of 26 after Stevens and Team USA defeated Greece in Saturday's Olympic opener. Details about Connor's death have not been revealed publicly and reports are that she died from an embolism that are unconfirmed. Former Wales and British and Lions player Pete Morgan has died at age 65. Morgan toured South Africa with the Lions in 1980 and Captain Liliani to victory over Australia. He created a cessation in his first season in senior rugby when he broke into Wales squad as a teenager. Leo Chaklunian, the Emmy award-winning, Oscar-winning sound designer and former chair of the Television Academy has died. He was 97. The TV Academy said Chalukian has passed away on July 18th after working in sound design well into his 80s. He first worked at Ryder Sound Service in 1954, becoming an award-winning re-recording mixer and eventually the company's owner in 1976. Former Major League pitcher Reyes Maranta, who dominated out of the San Francisco Giants bullpen for two years, died Sunday. He was just 31. According to multiple reports, Maranta died in a traffic accident in his home country of the Dominican Republic. From Iron Hill, it was with great sadness that we inform everyone on the sudden loss of a member of Iron Hill Brewing family. Chris Lapierre passed away suddenly this morning in Philadelphia. Surely most people that read this have, have met Lappy, and if you've met Lappy, you know he had a deep passion for Iron Hill, Philadelphia, and craft beer, all while riding a bike. He has been in the Philadelphia beer scene for over 30 years. 22 of those were spent at Iron Hill. Alma Powell, a civic leader and widow of retired General Colin L. Powell, the first Black National Secretary Advisor, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and Secretary of State died July 28th in Alexandria, Virginia. She was 86. Peggy Safrino, former Chief Aide de Paul who died in 2021-84, confirmed the death but did not provide the cause. One of the last surviving French veterans of the June 1944 D-Day landings has died at age 105, only weeks after he helped welcome U.S. President Biden to Paris for the 80th anniversary of the amphibious assault, the presidency said Tuesday. Jacques Lewis passed away on Thursday at the Invalids Memorial Complex in Paris where he had spent his final years. Beloved BBC broadcaster John Bennett has died at 82. 
<clears throat> has been confirmed. Bennett was one of Northern Ireland's best radio personalities, having joined the BBC in the 1960s. He was also the first voice on Radio Ulster when it launched in 1975. <clears throat> Excuse me, announcing the sad news of his death, his family said in a statement that Bennett died peacefully Friday, July 26, surrounded by loved ones. Robert Lowley Linguanuto, the creator of one of the most cherished Italian desserts of all time, has died at the age of 81. Renowned uh, restaurant Le Becciari, located in northeastern Italy, confirmed the father of, father of tiramisu died on Sunday. Linguanuto had worked at the Treviso restaurant as a pastry chef where he developed the recipe alongside the restaurant owner's wife, Alba Campiol. Craig Shakespeare, the former Leicester city manager, has died at the age of 60. Shakespeare was the assistant manager to Claudio Ranieri during the Leicester's title winning season in 2016 and took over as the first team coach the following year. He worked at Everton, Watford, Aston Villa and Norwich and was also assistant to Sam Allardyce in his short lived tenure as England's manager. And that concludes the uh, passing of the deceased members as well as the resignations for current day. So now for my uh, short and sweet commentary to you folks, we have passed over the threshold of July, which was number seven. Biblically, that's the month of completions. We are now in August, which is no month number eight, which is known biblically as the month of new or the number of new beginnings. So expect the old season to fall off of your life and the new ones to enter. Things like peace, prosperity, joy, healing, and everything that the locust stole from you will be coming back to you. But in order to do that, the proper mindset and preparation speaking life over yourself is critical. Let's continue to focus on the one goal that matters, which is winning and crossing the finish line together. To achieve that, we must tune out division. Remember, we're dealing with the cabal who has spent generation after generation inculcating and poisoning us in our mindset by race, age, politics, gender, height, social status, address, title of job, your friends, whatever they could latch on to, that is now being stripped away. We need to do our part in, within this, this patriotic and Christian community to toe the line of unity. Our best strength is our unity, not division. And that includes in this community, we need to stand locking arms together. We're not always going to agree. I've said that a long time ago, and I'm standing by that. That's not the point, but we need to stick together. When they divide us, the enemy wins. That's the only person that wins. So our unity is our best strength and our best asset. So it's just a call to arms to you folks as we are coming closer and closer to the finality of this or the beginning, depending on how you want to look at it. Um, we need to fight division and infighting within this community. That's the one thing we can control is what we do about it. So let's stay united and cross the finish line together. That concludes this week's broadcast of the weekly wrap up. As always, if we have anything urgent, we'll come out and let you know in our YouTube shorts, et cetera. Otherwise, have a great and safe weekend. Um, it's going to get intense, folks. Just be prepared more so than it's been. Stay unified. Stay calm. Continue to trust the Lord. We will win this battle because God wins. We win by proxy. Thanks again. God bless and take care. Bye for now.